Catholic family, Pier Giorgio Frassati. What's the matter? I'm really mad. Why? I don't want to be a priest. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to become a priest, Alex. And I don't want to be a monk either. Why is this bothering you? Father Michael told us that we have to be saints. That's what God wants us to do, isn't it? Yes, that's right. And lots of the saints have been priests or religious sisters or brothers, like the Curé of Ars or St. Teresa. You know what I mean? You don't have to have a religious vocation to be a saint. Really? A married person can be a saint. So can a lay person, too. Yes, the majority of people who make up the church are lay people, and they are called to be saints just like priests and members of religious orders. Huh? Is that true? Of course. I'm going to tell you the story of Pierre Giorgio. Was he a priest? No, he was a layperson like you or me. Pierre Giorgio lived in Turin, a city in the north of Italy. His parents were very rich. In fact, his father was the founder and director of a very famous newspaper, La Stampa. His mother was a painter. Their marriage was not a happy one, but they stayed together for the sake of their children. Pier Giorgio knew this, and he was sad that his parents didn't get along. Son, you know your mother and I want the best for you. So we've decided to send you to study at the Jesuit College. At college, Pier Giorgio began to pray and receive communion every day. Pier Giorgio prayed often, and his parents started to worry about him because they were not very religious. Lord, tell me what you want of me. I'm prepared to dedicate my life to doing your will. Young man, for the love of God, give me something to eat. Of course. I'll go home and bring you something. May God repay you, my boy. So you see, we have to see Jesus himself in the poor. He told us, what you do to one of these, the least of my brethren, you do to me. I want to change society from within. I want to work for the poor, to make the government help them. That is the social doctrine of the church. Well, when I'm old enough, I'm going to go into politics. That way, I can achieve much more. That's a good idea. You're a layperson and you can dedicate your life to politics. I can't do that. For the time being, you can join the Society of St. Vincent de Paul to work with the poor. My dear, you're not reading your newspaper. You're worried about Pierre Giorgio now, aren't you? Yes, I am. You're thinking that ever since he started going to the Jesuit college, he spent his whole time praying and doing charity work. Yes. And now he's joined the Society of St. Vincent de Paul to spend more time visiting the poor and the sick. That's right. I need him at the newspaper to take over after me. If he decides to become a priest, who will take my place? It's all right. He's never talked about becoming a priest. I know. And for the moment, I'm not worried. But all this praying, all this caring for the sick. Anyway, it wouldn't surprise me if one day he were to come in here and say, Mother, Father, I've decided to become a priest. Well, that's the last box. I think that should be enough for today's deliveries. It's never enough. There are many people in need out there who we're not reaching. We do what we can. I know, but even so, it's not enough. We have to put pressure on the government to help people who can't work. Getting involved in politics? I'm planning to. It's the best way to reach more people. 
Often, Pier Giorgio went to visit the poor and the sick in secret so that his parents would not find out. He wanted to end poverty everywhere in the world. He didn't want anyone to go hungry. That's really amazing! Yes, Pierre Giorgio did everything he could to make the lives of poor people better. He gave them food and medicines, but the most important thing he gave was his time. Although he still had time to go to the cinema and the theater, most of all, he and his friends loved to go walking in the mountains. Walking! I just remembered I'm going walking with the church on a parish trip. I'll go get my backpack ready. Me too! Is it a long way, Father Michael? Are you tired? A little. Me too. Very well. We'll stop here to have a rest and something to drink. You know, this reminds me of Pier Giorgio. He loved climbing mountains. I know, my dad told me. And I think that climbing this mountain is like being a saint. You see, holiness is a goal that we have to reach during our lifetime. We all have to be saints. My father says that you don't have to be a priest to be a saint. <laughs> of course not. Many lay people have become saints. In fact, being a saint means going to heaven. And do you know how many people there are in heaven? Tons and tons? Of course. And they all became saints because they all reached their goal. Wow! The life of a saint is similar to climbing a mountain like this one. Sometimes you get tired. And you have to stop and have a rest. Yes, and drink a little water. Those are the sacraments. The sacraments are there to give us the strength to keep on living a life of holiness. God gives us His grace, that is, His life, through the sacraments. Look! What a beautiful view! Yes, it's a wonderful view. This also happens as we become saints. We see life as something wonderful. Do saints see life as something this beautiful? Of course. As you become more saintly, you get closer to God and you see life, the world, and other people as God sees them. That's wonderful. Is that what happened to Pierre Giorgio? Yes. Pierre Giorgio saw God in everyone who was poor and in need. He wanted to solve the problem of poverty, so he became a member of the People's Party to help change society. Charity is not enough. We need social reform. Brave words, Pier Giorgio. I admire your courage. But what can we do? Think about the people in need. Work to get the state to help them. Where do our taxes go? The state is responsible for administering this money to stop poverty. It's true. The state has to help people who are going hungry. More social services! <laughs> oh. We want the government to respect the poorest citizens. Those who are most in need have a right to live with dignity. Yeah, yeah he's, he's right! right. Pierre Giorgio was really brave. Yes, he was like a hurricane. You know what? I want to sign up to visit poor people with the church. I think that's a great idea. I'll see you next Saturday. On Saturday? Yes, the church visits poor families on Saturdays. Hey, my dad said he'd take us to the swimming pool on Saturdays. You're going to miss out. Oh, no, you're right. Is something wrong? Well, you see, I'm thinking maybe I'll sign up after the summer. Fine. You can come whenever you like. Great. We finally made it. Wow! We're so high up! Look! You can see the whole valley from here. Yeah! It's incredible! It's like looking down from heaven. You see? It was worth the effort, wasn't it? Uh -huh. Getting to the top is like getting to heaven. It's worth all the hard work we do throughout our lives to be good Catholics. 
Does everything look this beautiful from heaven? Even more so. Wow! Heaven is such a great reward that we can't begin to imagine it. We'll get there with the grace of God and by doing good works. Doing good works? That's right. God always helps us, but we have to make an effort ourselves and climb the mountain, don't you think? Yes, I guess so. Pier Giorgio dedicated his life to the poorest of the poor. One of them was called Converso, and Pier Giorgio took him clothes and medicines. Can I come in? Converso was very sick. He could hardly move. Pier Giorgio helped him wash and cooked for him whenever he could. He also gave him the injections he needed to get well again. And when he had finished, they would say the rosary together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Thank you, Pier Giorgio. Thank you so much. How can I ever repay you for what you've done? Pray for me, Converso. That's the best payment you could give me. I already do that, my son. I've done that since I met you. Thank you, Converso. You're a great help to me. What do you mean? I help you? Yes, I'm serious. You know, every day I offer my illness up to Jesus, and I join my suffering to Jesus' suffering on the cross. You taught me to do that. You're doing the right thing. Suffering is a great treasure. It brings us closer to God. May God bless you, my boy. May God bless you. We'll get to heaven with God's grace and by doing good works which reflect his life in us. All the efforts we make in our lives are worthwhile. Are you still awake? Dad, do you have to make a big effort to be a saint? Well, yes, sometimes we do. Do you think that there are poor people in the city who need me? Well, I don't know. People who live on their own are always grateful to have a visitor, somebody who really cares about them. Right. Good night, Alex. Good night, Dad. Morning. What is it? I don't know what to do. You see, Pierre Giorgio dedicated his life to the poor, and I want to be like him. I think that's great. Well, at church there's a group of boys and girls who visit people who are poor or who are sick every Saturday. And you want to go with them, do you? Yes, but I was supposed to be going to the swimming pool with Sergio's dad on Saturdays. That was our big summer plan, remember? I see. If I choose to go visit sick people, I won't be able to go to the pool. You know, Pierre Giorgio faced the same dilemma. His family were going to go on vacation to a village called Polone. They'd been having fantastic weather. At Pierre Giorgio's house, everybody was looking forward to the holidays. We'll go fishing on the lake this year. It'll be wonderful. I plan to go riding. I can't wait. Pierre, have you packed your suitcase? Mother, father, I have to tell you something. I won't be going on vacation with you this year. Does this have anything to do with your poor people? Yes, I'll stay to take care of them. But Pierre, everybody leaves Turin in the summer. We all need a holiday now, don't we? That's exactly why, mother. If everybody goes, who will be there for the poor and the sick? Well, son, I have to admit this doesn't surprise me. You did the same thing last year. Thanks for understanding. You really are wonderful parents. <sighs> oh. That boy worries me. I'll talk to him when we get back home. I need him to start work at the newspaper. That's what Pierre Giorgio did?
Shall we have a rest? Okay. Here, have a drink. No thanks. I'll have a drink when we get to the top. You want to go thirsty? But why? Our life, to be Christian, has to be a continual renunciation, a continual sacrifice. But it's not burdensome when we think about what these few years of sorrow are compared to a happy eternity where joy will have no measure or end and where we'll enjoy a peace beyond anything we can imagine. You know what? You're absolutely right. I'm not going to drink either. Lord, I want to dedicate my life to the service of those who are most in need. Grant me your grace to see your face in every one of your children who is sick. Our strength is in Jesus, in the Blessed Sacrament. Are you talking about prayer? Prayer and the sacraments. That's what makes us different to other politicians. We Catholics are doing this because we love God, because we see God in the poorest of the poor. Can I come in? Of course. Come in, Alex. Father Michael, I decided to sign up to visit the poor on Saturdays. I think that's a great idea. I see you have a book there. What is it? It's the life of Pier Giorgio Frassati. That's what made up your mind, isn't it? Yes, Pier Giorgio worked really hard to care for the poorest and neediest people. And I want to do the same. You know, Pier Giorgio said that true charity didn't mean giving donations. He thought that true charity Ooh. meant giving yourself. That is, giving your time. That's the hardest thing of all. I know. It's kind of tough for me, because I won't be able to go to the pool on Saturdays with my friends. The people you visit will be truly grateful, and God will be very happy. Whenever he could, Pier Giorgio went to care for his friend Converso. Did you ever think about becoming a priest? Yes, I've often thought about it. I think you'd be a wonderful priest. But I don't think that's what God's asking of me. Are you sure? Yes. You see, here in Italy, priests are not as close to the people as lay people can be. Do you understand? And to be a priest involves many other responsibilities. And I want to go places it would be extremely difficult to get to as a priest. I see. That's why I've decided to study to become a mining engineer at the Polytechnic University of Turin. A mining engineer? Why? To bring God to the miners. To serve God among the workers. Society has to change from within. Oh. Son, your mother and I are very worried. Are you thinking of becoming a priest? No, Father. A vocation to the priesthood would be a great blessing, but God is not calling me to that path. Well, yes, I know many good and fine priests. But you see, I've given my whole life to this newspaper. La Stampa is the result of many years of hard work. I'd like you to come and work on it, so that in time, you can take over my position. I understand, Father, and I'll take the job if that's what you want. You don't know how happy you've made me. I know, Father. I want you and Mother to be happy and not to worry about me. I'll go tell your mother. Before you do, Father, I need to ask you for some money. Of course. It's to buy medicine for a friend. I guessed as much. Why are you always in such good spirits? You ask me why I'm in good spirits. How could I not be? So long as my trust in God gives me strength. A Catholic must always be cheerful. Sadness should be banished from all Christian souls. But sometimes suffering makes us sad. Suffering isn't the same as sadness. Sadness is a disease almost always caused by lack of faith. Do you mean that faith is the source of happiness? Of course. 
believing in God and trusting in Him should help us always to be cheerful. Even if we find thorns in our path, it's not a sad path. It's a cheerful one. Cheerfulness among suffering. Hey, Dad? What is it? How did Pierre Giorgio die? Well, you see, he visited so many people who were sick that in the end he contracted polio. But at home he said nothing. Why not? Because his grandmother was very sick too, and his parents were worried about her. I see. He didn't want his parents to worry even more. That's right. When his grandmother died, he told them, but by then it was too late. The illness is very advanced. Doctor? I am sorry, he's dying. But how long? How long does he have? Five or six days. Perhaps seven, no more. <laughs> Pierre Giorgio suffered great pain, and he offered this suffering to God. He never lost his smile. Oh. The day before he died, one of his hands was paralyzed, but even so, he wrote a note to his friend. And don't forget to visit Converso and give him his injections. Up until his last moments, his thoughts were with his friends, the poor and the needy. Oh, wow. On the day of his funeral, the streets of Turin were full of poor people, the people Pierre Giorgio had given the best years of his life to. This is incredible. I never knew that our son was so well loved. I, I didn't know that Pierre Giorgio was rich. I mean, that his family had so much money. I didn't know either. He never told me. You know, Dad, I want to be like Pierre Giorgio. I want to change the world to make people happy and bring them closer to God. <laughs> I think that's great. And without giving up movies or TV. Well... You're a layperson like Pierre Giorgio. That's what I mean. I want to be a layperson and a saint. <laughs> <laughs>